the biblical truth of our hymns. And I'm glad we are done with all the carols. <laughs> and we move to a wonderful, great hymn, One Day. And let's look at the, the author, John Wilbur Chapman, a Presbyterian evangelist in the late 19th century. He generally traveled with a gospel singer, Charles Alexander. At the age of 17, he made a public declaration of his Christian faith and joined the Richmond Presbyterian Church. He received his Bachelor of Arts degree from Lake Forest College and a seminary degree from Lane Theology Seminary in Cincinnati, Ohio. Chapman took on several pastors before shifting to the evangelistic circuit. He began preaching with the legendary Dwight, Dwight Moody in 1893, as well as leading, as leading many evangelist events in his own. Among Chapman's disciples on the evangelistic circuit was Billy Sunday. In 1909, Chapman demanded that any field evangelist who doubted the inerrancy of the scriptures to be removed from the ministry. Now, uh, before we get into looking at the, the hymn itself, let's look at stanza one of five. Wonderful. Stanza one deals with the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Jesus' birth in Bethlehem was not the beginning story of Jesus. He's eternal, always been eternal. And as the part of the Trinity's second Christ has existed from all eternity, Micah 5, 2. He's coming to earth as a man was not the, I don't want to say true beginning of Jesus, but as I'm saying, Jesus existed before the Bethlehem birth. And then when we look at the refrain, the chorus, it's not just simple simpleness of you know just blah 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 blah. You know, let's add some more words. A lot of the hymns I have noticed by the people who make up the, the tune, and I'm not gonna mention no names, but when you take the po the poem, because a lot of them are poems, and you have somebody come along and say, Well, I'm gonna put it to music, and they just add a refrain or chorus. Just so they can get their name. This is not so. It is doctrine. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely. That is the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. That Jesus Christ suffered and died. Wait a minute, let's go back to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That love is God, that love is Jesus Christ. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. And he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then the gospel, where Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that is not it. In this hymn. That is not it. Watch. I'll read the refrain again. Living he loved me. John 3.16 Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely. Again that is 1 Corinthians 15. But. But forever, one day he's coming. Oh, glorious day. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is a comfort for the Christian. This is 
a, re a memorial of the Lord's Supper to remember what Christ has done for us and to look forward to his, co to his coming. This ought to be one of them hymns that are sung when you take part of the Lord's Supper. This ought to be a hymn that ought to be sung or read, because I have a terrible voice, on the streets when you're preaching. Because it has the hope. It has the gospel. It has the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see how exciting that. And, you know, we, we're going to go through this hymn. And if I were to go with all the scriptures, I could go an hour, not long. The scripture tones of this. And then stanza number two deals with the death of Christ on Calvary. The spies rejected, it says, bearing our sins because he loves us. And then stanza number three, his burial, his tomb. And four is the resurrection celebration. Yeah, a football team won a big trophy. Whoopie doo doo. And all the churches shut down their service so they can have a TV and have, you know, the big game parties and junk. And they won't celebrate Jesus Christ. The grave could not conceal him no longer, it says. That's a fact that is recorded. That is my salvation. It was impossible for Christ to remain in that tomb, though how many soldiers stood out that tomb, though that seal was on that tomb. The angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, before his birth, came over and rolled that stone away and said, Victory. I have come to the cross of Jesus as a sinner, April 21st, 1987. I went into that tomb dead and trespassed. And I come out of the resurrection of that tomb. I come out the first day of my life a Christian. You're not a Christian when you come to Calvary. You're not a Christian when you go into the empty tomb. Many people come to the cross. Many people wear a cross. Many people celebrate Easter, the empty tomb. But you're not a Christian. Until you come out resurrected as Christ came resurrected. That baptism shows that I have been buried. I have died to myself. I have died to sin. I have died to Satan. And I am now going to be buried under that water. Dead people get buried. Immersion. And I come up out alive. A new creature. A new man. There's a lot of people out there come to Calvary. They don't walk away saved. They say this prayer. They eat Jesus. They, they think the baptism saves them. No, it is the death, burial, resurrection, and the belief, and your faith of your heart with nothing else. One day. Uh, verse 4 again, like I said, eternal son. Acts 2.31, John 10.17. Glory to God, Jesus Christ. And then stanza five, the triumph of Jesus Christ is coming again. What a wonderful hymn. This hymn is great to come after all that dread and misery of the carols of a time that is nowhere in the Bible called Christmas. So let's take a look. One day. One day when heaven was filled with his praises. There was a time that Jesus Christ sat with the Father, sat with the angels before the cherubim, and glory to God to Jesus Christ. And there was a day, it says, when sin was as black as it could be. God couldn't look upon man. God is holy. God says, be holy for I am holy. I am incapable of being holy. Because all have sinned come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So I got a problem. God and Jesus Christ seated in heaven, and I will die in my sins and go off into a devil's hell for all eternity. Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin. Look at that, the virgin birth. I do have one problem here. That capital V. 
that gives you a little worship of Mary. Though Mary, a wonderful woman that she is, that God says you're going to want inside your womb is going to bury the Lord, bear the Lord Jesus Christ. Mary too. I don't like that capital. It's not capitalized in the Bible. But there's the virgin birth. If a man says, I do not believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, and I'm a Christian, no, you're not. You cannot be saved. You cannot be a Christian if you do not believe in the virgin birth. You cannot be saved if you don't believe that Mary was of Israel. He came onto his own Jewish people. She was of Judah. She was of David. Dwell among men. My example is he. 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. You know, where, where John writes to us, there he was. There was the flesh. We lived with him. We talked with him. We sat with him. We listened to him. We saw him. We heard him. We ate with him. Glory to God. Jesus Christ dwelt among men, and he is God. Job says one time, do you have eyes as I have? Do you have? Yes, that was answered many, many, many years later, Job. In the name and the person of Jesus Christ. One of... Uh, Stanza two, one day they led him up Calvary's mountain. He went willingly. He went full force. He the Bible says he set uh, to, to, to Jerusalem. Jesus Christ was born to die, born in Bethlehem to die on Calvary's cross. And he knew it. Humans are born to die, but we don't know when and where and why and how. Yet Christ, when he was born in that manger, knew that 33 and a half years, they would take him outside the gates of Jerusalem and they would crucify him. He would know exactly. At the offering of that Passover, at 6 p.m., he would die. He knew that. And he still went. Because of me, because of my sins, because of you, because of your sins. One day they nailed him to die on the tree. Nails in the hands and nails in the feet, which still bear those marks to the, those marks today, my friend. Those nail prints in his feet, those nail prints in his hands are still there with this with the spear print in his side. And I'm to believe also. Possibly the marks of those thorns upon his head. To die in the tree. That's what he came to live for. To die. Suffering. Anguish. Despised and rejected. Isaiah 53. This is loaded with scriptures. This is the man that witnessed to Billy Sunday and Billy Sunday got saved. This is the man that walked and talked and preached with Moody. You're not going to get a hymn like this today. Not in today's church. No way. Not the lad to see in church aid. Bearing our sins. Our sins. Well, being Mr. Chapman, you included yourself as a sinner. Oh, wow. Where the church today is so busy gathering, jobbing about what those people did, what that person do, what they're doing, but and then they don't look at themselves as sinners. And Chapman says, our sins. That man writes our sins, and I said, what age was it? 16? Let's see, go back over my notes again. Make sure I get this right. 17 years old. At 17 years old, that guy writes our sins. That guy was saved and going to be in heaven. That guy, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth right in one day. Salvation, Romans chapter 10. Look at that. My, my, that's him, him speak. He says, we're all sinners, our sins. He says, my Redeemer, capital R, is he, capital H. That guy is writing a full testimony. Listen, if you do not proclaim that Jesus Christ is your Savior, you do not go out and tell people that Jesus saved, you do not try to witness, you do not try to pass out gospel, and then you turn around to be a Christian, I doubt. I have the right to doubt, according to James. I have the right to doubt you, according to Romans. 
Now, I don't know salvation, but scripture was scripture. This guy wrote it down. This guy put it down. This guy sung it to Jesus about his soul. Remarkable testimony. My Redeemer. I go, oh, I'm a Christian. That's not what Jesus would do. You're offending people. Well, listen, you don't know what the Bible is. You don't know what the Bible tells you to do. I doubt your salvation by your ignorance of the Bible. This guy is loaded with scriptures. I said it would take an hour, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, if we were to look at all the scriptures of this hymn. Stanza three. One day they left him alone in the garden. We go right to the garden where he met with the father three times and prayed. And he wasn't afraid of death. It wasn't death. It was that cup, that disgusting, filthy cup of all the sins that man has ever done since Adam. Every single sin that was in that cup, Jesus said, oh boy. The anger of God. The wrath of God. And how dare you say that God hates the sin and loves the sinner. In that cup was the sinners too. Because in order to have sin, you got to have a sinner. And the sinner has to do those sins that anger God that Jesus said, oh boy. You think of your mean, nasty, most wickedest sin you can think of was in that cup as much as stealing a pencil. As much as stealing a, a pen. As much as telling a lie, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, or any kind of lie to get a laugh. Any kind of lie that gets you repetition, gets you a fame, gets you honor. Little wives' tales, little white lies, little polka dot lies. All those were in that cup, in that garden. God and Jesus Christ together. And if Jesus Christ needs to pray for the, to the Father, I think I need to pray to the Father. About my sin. He didn't pray for his sins. He was sinless. In the garden. One day. He rested. From suffering free. Angels came down o'er his tomb. To keep vigil. Hope of the hopeless. I'm hopeless. Before the day I got saved. From September. I forgot when I was born. September 6, 1968, until April 20th, 1987, I was hopeless. I was a sinner. I was going to die and go to hell before April 21st, April 20th. I lied. Did you break this stuff? No, I didn't break it. The dog did it. Snick my fingers in the cookie jar, take a cookie I was supposed to do, take money I wasn't supposed to do. I was a sinner, but life came to be hope, the blessed hope. Titus 2.13, the blessed hope. That is my memory verse. That is my life verse. I had one time about 2,000 were around there. I had a doctor tell me I have emphysema. I'm going to die. That moment, Titus 2.13 became my life verse. I don't remember what my life verse was before that. I'm still going. I've still got the gospel. I've still got preaching. I've still got people I'm trying to encourage growing more. Guy told me today, he said, you know, you encouraged me. That's because the love. That's because the hope that I have in the blessed hope where one day I, one day I was hopeless. And now I'm hopeful with Jesus Christ. My Savior. Look, hope of the hopeless. My Savior is He. You cannot have hope if you don't have a Savior. Capital S. And there's no other Savior but by Jesus and His Word. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abiding upon him. Look at the scripture in this hymn. Look at the testimony. Look how this guy, Mr. Chapman, has told his testimony. I am just by reading the stanzas to you. I am telling my testimony. I am uplifted. I am glorying in God. 
You want to try that with any crap song on the radio? You want to try that with a crap uh, today, modern Christian music, if I can use that word? Verse 4. One day the grave could not conceal him no longer. I've been to many graveyards. I have seen many graveyards. And they still keep the occupants there. They're still there. Every human being has been buried in a graveyard on their own merit are still in that graveyard. They didn't come and dig it up to build buildings and junk on them. There are Indian resting places right now. We don't know. Those bodies are in there. All over the world, men and women who have died who have been buried are still there. But in a little place called Calvary, a little garden, that wasn't even the tomb of Jesus, it was Joseph's tomb. They put God manifest in the flesh in that tomb, dead. Luke, the medical doctor, recorded it's dead. The people, when Pilate said, uh, certified that he is dead, were certified that he was dead. One day the, the grave could not conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. One place in the gospel says the angel of the Lord did it. You take your radio. I've got the real rock and roll. And ain't no fornication going back in the back seat of a car. It is God manifesting the flesh that took that stone and said, you can't keep me. The same Jesus that went down in hell, grabbed the keys of death in hell, said, hey, these are mine. Thank you. I got an invitation to go over there. Sorry, guys, but I'm the Messiah. I was the one. You stay here in hell and watch me cross that goal. Lazarus, <laughs> come forth. <laughs> Two Lazarus would come out. Deb, I want to read that again. One day the grave could not conceal him no longer. This is so wonderful. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death. He had conquered. Now is he ascended my Lord evermore. Look at that. He's going from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He's going to Acts chapter 1. And it wasn't just finished that. All right, he came out of the grave. He's, ascend, he's ascended to the right hand of the Father right now. There he is, alive and well, with the angels back praising, with the cherubim back praising, and glory to God, he's back home. How's Allah doing? How's Muhammad doing? How's Buddha belly doing? Huh? How are they doing? You check their graves? I bet you it's too full. One day. Do we do four? Yeah. Let's do four again. One day the grave could not conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose. He arose. Hallelujah, he arose. Over death he had conquered, now is ascended. My Lord evermore. One day the trumpet shall sound for his company. The Bible says trump. I read that first, that's only four. The trump shall sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glory will shine. You imagine that moment when the church goes up, the dead rise first, and those that are alive remain are caught up together in the clouds. And at that moment when we have the final church assembly of this stratosphere of the earth, that moment, there are no lost people in that congregation. It is only the save of Jesus Christ by the death, burial, and resurrection. Only we are being gathered in those clouds. And that next moment when we're finally all together, the next moment we see will be Jesus. And Paul says on the road to Damascus, he was brighter than the noonday sun. Glory to God. Comfort ye one see. This song is comforting because look at what it's talking about. It's talking about that Trump. It's talking about Jesus. He's talking about the hope. There is no more hopelessness in a Christian's life. Any moment Jesus can come. Any moment death will come. 
So what? Jesus will come. The skies of the glory will shine. Wonderful day. Wonderful day that won't be for the world. Won't be for the unsaved. For those that are saved. Some Christians today probably hate it. I can imagine eh, yesterday or whatever. I don't care. That, 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 that's that Super Bowl garbage. Wouldn't it be, as soon as they flip that coin, that coin's up in the air. And wouldn't it be great if the Lord all called this church home? There would be people, I ain't get to see the game. Imagine a pastor getting up in church. And that moment he's about to oh, open your Bible. And the Lord comes, I didn't get to deliver my sermon. You got a, a you got a bride and a, and, and a groom up before they're going about to get married. Just say I do, and the Lord come. I didn't get to be married. I didn't get my diploma. I didn't get my career. I didn't get my car. I didn't get. Uh. It's a glorious day to me. I have nothing more than want to see Jesus Christ. Nothing more. Wonderful day, my beloved one bringing. It's coming. It's coming. This guy is looking forward to Jesus Christ. He is wanting. He's died. 1910. He'll be 100. I'm going home to the Lord. I think I read something about right around Christmas time. I am so sorry. Wonderful day, my beloved one bringing. Glorious Savior. This Jesus is mine. Wow, he mentioned Jesus twice. He actually named J-E-S-U-S. -S, and he said, is mine. Glorious day. Put this in the hymnal. Now, here's the problem from, for the church. Ready? You got church. Music leader goes up. You got inside the building, inside the building, you got Christians and you got lost people. All right. You got worldly Christians. You got saved Christians that are looking for the glory of God. And you have lost people. How about this? Can you imagine a worldly Christian? Singing, one day the trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glory will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved ones bring in. Glorious Savior, Jesus. you imagine a worldly Christian saying that without being charged as a sinner? For lying? How about a lost man in the congregation? You imagine a lost man saying, this Jesus is mine. What would I do? What would I tell if the Lord gave me a church and I had a song there? I would tell that song there one day, that wonderful, great, that's full of scripture. For those in this congregation who are worldly and, and not walking right with the Lord, you got other aspects than the Lord. If you have never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're not saved. Will you look along? Will you read with us as those that love the Lord, those that serve the Lord, those that want in the Lord, those that are joyful in the Lord, as those that sing to the Lord? Will you worldly Christians and will you that are unsaved read along? People might leave the church. So what? You want their filthy liquor? Oh, yeah, that's what you want. You don't want to offend anybody because they probably put money. It's coming a day you won't have those people unsaved. Coming a day that when all will be glorious, though they were worldly. There are some that are looking forward and wanting Jesus to come. Sing on top of your lungs the one day. Glory is to God. You might have some people in church. If you're going to have them sing. <laughs> I sing like that for the stupid Agar songs that we've already gone through. Some of the songs I don't even sing. Because they're biblically incorrect. This one's biblically correct. Phil, glory to God. 
in majesty. I include this. This is wonderful. One day when heaven was filled with his promises. One day when sin was as black as it could be. Today that would be considered prejudice. Why people say you can't call them a name, but they call each other the same name. Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin. Virgin birth. Dwell among men. My example is he. I'm to live like Christ-like. Christ prayed. Christ preached. Somebody come up. Well, that's not what Christ would do. Well, what did he do? And then they get upset because I say something mean and nasty to them. Well, Jesus said, you, you, you vipers, you serpents, you. He rebuked the people who didn't know anything. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord, I mean, that's not the one. Uh, if thou shalt confess thy sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us and wash us. 1 John 1 9. Rising, he justified. Justified. Made just, right before God, freely forever. One day he is coming. Oh, glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary mountain. One day they nailed him to die on the tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried, my, buried he, carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. One day they left him alone in the garden. One day he rested, suffering free. Angels come down his tomb to keep him. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. His tomb to keep Virgil, hope of the hopeless. My Savior is he. Forgive me. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely. Forever. One day he's coming. Oh, glory. My sins under the blood are forgiven forever. Never come back to my faith. One day the grave could seal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose. Over death he had conquered. Now is he ascended, my Lord, evermore. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming. Oh, glorious day. Before I read that last one, I want to do something here. Bear with me one moment. Okay. Now, the last stanza. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glory will shine. Wonderful day my beloved ones bring. Glorious Savior, this Jesus is mine. Loving he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely. Forever one day he's coming. Oh glorious day. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. For thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God is raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved for while the heart for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed mr chapman was not ashamed for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord this lord here over all is rich unto all that call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? 
And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of priests and bring glad tidings of good, good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Elias said, Who has believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, blessed Savior. One day, one day, whether we die, whether we live in, one day. He came, one day he died, that day he was buried, and three days and three nights later he arose from the grave. One day he was ascended up to heaven to the Father, the right hand, and one day he's coming home for us. Coming along for us, not home. He's going to bring us home. 